I've done this so many times by now, I'm just gonna ask the question. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas without taking any damage? Before special and skills, there's the name. It needs to be perfect to accurately represent what I am as a person and what defines me as a man. So I chose Chocolate with Nuts, after the fish in Spongebob that was born with glass bones and paper skin. He is my spirit animal, after all. I'm doing things differently this time around. Strength and endurance are worthless, as is charisma. Intelligence, perception, and agility are maxed out. The skills I chose were guns, lockpick, and sneak. Always relying on speech gets boring, so I'm not putting any points into it. I did the same thing for my run in Fallout 3 as I did in this one. I used console commands to set my max health to 1 so that any damage at all kills me and reloads my most recent save. I also started utilizing quick saves and quick loads, which you may notice throughout this video. My hunt for the man in the checkered suit is on. After a few weapon mods caught my eye in the general store, I spoke to Sunny Smiles to get my hands on a varmint rifle. Then I killed her and her stupid dog, and with it, bought a silencer and extended mags mods from Chet before ending his life as well. The townsfolk in Good Springs were very nice to me. To reward them for their generosity, I killed them all and let the Powder Gangers take control. Then I killed the Powder Gangers too. My next stop was Prim, for no reason other than Johnson Nash being the next closest vendor after Chet's tragic accident. I found myself inside the Bison Steve Hotel. The Powder Gangsters inside provided me with my first real challenge. It's kinda like Call of Duty, where he who sees first kills first. Their guns are drawn and they're facing me, giving them a step up in the fight. After several deaths, I was able to walk in and instantly aim at the bad guy's head, allowing me to kill him and hide behind a wall. Several deaths later, I was on the second floor, where I had even more fun dying over and over again. Good thing I'm persistent. The gangsters were cleared out, Beagle was rescued, and Prim was in need of a new sheriff. NCR were my first suggestion, but with my speech skill laughably low, I had to drag myself to the Mojave outpost to get approval from someone higher up in the ranks. Then something strange happened. After I killed Ranger Ghost so I could steal her clothes, one of the dialogue options with Major Knight was to tell him that I'd helped out around the outpost. Maybe Ranger Ghost was like a total bitch or something. Regardless, I brought the law back to Prim, and my work there was done. Next was Nipton. Boxcars, the last standing member of the Powder Gremlins, was granted the sweet release of death he'd wanted for so long. Volpest and Colta also needed to die. Something deep within me said it must be. So that's what happened. Using my sneak skill and silenced varmint rifle, I eliminated Volpes and his group of Legion soldiers. I found myself full of items that I didn't want to drop. Novak seemed like the perfect place to sell them. I took the road southeast of Nipton and killed a whole family of bighorners along the way for some quick and easy experience. And then I got carried away and found myself in a bit of a sticky situation involving a lot of very dangerous ghouls. It took a considerable amount of time and ammo, but I was able to kill enough of them to accomplish my goal. I really wanted to know what the hell was in that shack. The hunting shotgun inside was nice, but the real reward was discovering what happened when I took too much radiation damage. Once it crosses over into the first radiation sickness category, you take damage, which kills me. Or I tripped over a rock while I was standing still, it could honestly be either. Fresh out of that irradiated hellhole, I encountered a few traveling merchants to whom I could sell some of my wares. That voice in the back of my head came back, and I was determined to kill them all in the most beautiful of fashions. Picking them off at a distance would just not do. I put myself between all four of them, targeted their skulls and vats, and fired away. It took well over a dozen attempts, but man when I got it, it was so worth it. With that out of the way, I freed some powder grapes from the Legion, killed a Legion scouting party, killed some NCR soldiers too, and arrived at Novak. Needing a mule, I sent Jeannie Mae to her death in the middle of the night, and took Boone as my companion. By this point, I had decided that like Volpes before him, Caesar must die. With Boone by my side, this would be a slice of pie. As I neared Cottonwood Cove, I noticed that the colors were becoming washed out. I couldn't remember if it normally happened in this area or what, but that wasn't going to stop me. 
what was going to stop me was an unfortunate series of quick saves and Boone being unconscious. I was outnumbered, outgunned, and my life was taken from me numerous times before I managed to run behind a nearby building. I then retreated one final time to a pretty attractive rock, from which I killed the last of the Legion at Cottonwood Cove. Next stop, Caesar. Uh, I, I mean, next stop, Caesar. What the fuck? Next stop, Caesar. Okay, so I can't take the boat to the fort. Uh, I don't know why. I guess it's just something that happens sometimes. Well, if I can't kill Caesar right now, I'll just go kill some other group of people. Haven't been to Boulder City in a few playthroughs, let's go there. Cons are a bit tougher than your run-of-the-mill powder garbanzos. Luckily, I had a few hollow points, which do extra damage against people who are hollow inside, hence the name. I killed Jessup, became accepted by the NCR, leveled up, and moved on. By the way, some time ago I was storing all my items in Boone, and he equipped the Legion Recruit helmet. Normally, companions can't wear faction armor, but he is. I don't know, I just thought I'd mention it, it looks cool. I stopped by the gun runners to sell what I'd picked up on my travels thus far. And then I saw it. The M1911. The greatest handgun of all time. What's better was that the Robo Vendor even had two mods available. The first added a sweet chrome finish to it, and the second added a silencer. The first humans to fall victim to my new weapon were two freeside thugs. It was less effective than I would have thought. As I made my way to the strip, a new idea came over me. What if I took care of everything I possibly could before confronting Mr. House or Yes Man? So I turned around, slipped off a rock in Good Spring Cemetery, and proceeded towards Hidden Valley. I killed a lot of bark scorpions and centaurs before entering the hidden bunker. A powerful sniper rifle allowed me to take out the paladins who greeted me, ensuring I'd never have to deal with the Brotherhood of Steel again. Back at Good Spring Cemetery, I prepared to cautiously cross Cazador Canyon. Rather than taking the normal path to Red Rock, I took a back entrance, which was crawling with Cazadors. Ooh, what fun. Not really. Right before I got brutally face-fucked by a giant mantis, Victor showed up and saved the day. Actually, he distracted me while Boone handled the Manti. His wife is dead, he doesn't feel anything anymore, he won't mind. Inside Red Rock, I introduced myself to Regis to ensure that things proceeded properly. Then I entered their sacred house and vatsed almost everyone inside. Not gonna lie, it looked pretty sweet. Next came Nellis. I smashed Pearl with an axe, gave Boone some new armor, accidentally blew myself up with a grenade launcher, and tried once more to travel to the fort. It did not work. This time, rather than taking out my frustration on the Great Cons, I took it out on oh so many innocent people. Everyone inside the Tops and Ultra Lux died. And I do mean everyone. Gamora was a bit more challenging because they actually fought back. I hate it when they fight back. Before I could head into the Lucky 38, there was one more thing I had to take care of. The NCR Embassy on the Strip. Boone was less than impressed with my slaughtering of his former brothers in arms. You know what that means. When I exited the embassy, several people cowered before me. It's almost over. I let Mr. House do his little demonstration before ending his life and letting Yes Man take over. I did the thing at the substation and was transported to Hoover Dam. The push to Hoover Dam was not easy. The lone Securitron friend I had died right before my eyes. My strategy consisted of a lot of peeking up from behind cover, and firing randomly until I got a headshot or died. The double barrel shotgun I bought earlier made the Hoover Dam offices a bit easier than the outside. The last fight had arrived. Just me and the Legate, and the two shits accompanying him. Must have been take your shit to work day. I pumped myself full of every chem I had, destroyed the Legate, killed his shits and... My head is crippled. The fuck? I have 8 health? Oh god damn it! I gained health when I took every chem known to man. All right. It was tougher to kill the Legate without my happy drugs, but I did do it. I took the Legate's head off and put it where it belongs, in the drink. All that's left is to talk to Oliver, and the game is over. Here's the thing. When Oliver arrives, your weapon is automatically holstered. Without speech or barter, there's no way to talk him down, so you have to fight him. But it is impossible to get any further than this without taking any damage. There was not enough time to do anything, 
By the time you pull your gun out to fire, he's already killed you. You're not close enough to any cover to sprint out of the line of fire. In my attempt to do something different, I may have fucked myself. You cannot be Fallout New Vegas without taking any damage. You know what, I refuse to accept that. Let's look at the situation we've got ourselves in, alright? If we side with Mr. House or Yes Man, this same event transpires. Oliver arrives, and we're back where we are now. Our options are to side with the NCR or side with the Legion. Seeing as I've already wiped out the Legion at Cottonwood Cove, it only makes sense to side with the Legion, which means it's time to reload an old save. Not being able to go to the fort early on paid off after all. I reloaded right after I wiped out everyone at Cottonwood Cove. Benny died again, as did Mr. House. Caesar complimented me and gave me my first order. Destroy whatever the hell is in the bunker beneath the fort. With that same sniper I mentioned earlier, and some armor-piercing rounds, the robots down there were not much of a challenge. The radiation was a concern, though the Rad X and Rad Away I had were enough to keep me from dying. I hadn't done a good enough job earlier when I visited Nellis, so I went back there and killed everyone else who foolishly thought they had escaped my wrath. I knew what was coming up. King Salad would ask me to destroy the Brotherhood of Steel, so that's what I did. The turrets in the bunker were the hardest part. They fire fast and can take a lot of damage. The paladins and others could be killed with a single shot from a Gauss rifle. And with that, the Brotherhood of Steel, Mojave Chapter, are no more. I returned to Caesar, bathed in the sweet glow of his praise, and was given my next assignment. The White Gloves are friend, not foe, he says. But I don't like cannibals. The only thing worse than a cannibal is a slug. So I took extra good care in making sure that every last motherfucker inside the Ultra Lux was on the receiving end of one of my bullets. Boone did not approve, so I had him sit in the naughty corner. With the Brotherhood destroyed, King Shit Caesar had headaches. Oh, poor Caesar. Oh, owie, my head hurts. Fucking bitch. So I saved his life. No big deal. All that stood between me and the last quest of the game was assassinating President Kimball. The hard part wasn't the assassination itself. It was getting into position without being made by the NCR Rangers. Once I did, it was relatively trivial to put a giant hole where Kimball's heart used to be. Now, the end. For real this time. The Legate gave me my orders. They were written in crayon, I can't read shit. I could make out NCR bad, which I can only assume translates to take back Hoover Dam while killing as many of those NCR savages as you can. I found an L96A1 sniper rifle, which had better sights than the rifle I've been using, which made portions of the fight easier. Inside the offices, I swapped it out for an M14. That gun is phenomenal. The toughest of NCR foes could be taken out with three or four shots. I confronted Oliver. Again, without speech, the only option is to fight. He thought he was being a sneaky pheasant by laying down traps. I, the master strategist that I am, did not take the light step perk, which would make traps irrelevant. Instead, I sprinted towards them like a fucking madman and jumped over them all. I killed Oliver and his pals, spoke to the legate one final time, and beat Fallout New Vegas without taking any damage. What can I say about this run? To be honest, it was about what I expected it to be. A few spots were a little challenging, but by and large, it was nothing too crazy. For some reason, even though I prefer New Vegas over 3, I like doing the no damage run in Fallout 3 more than this one, I just had more fun with it. Now what would be challenging is doing a can you beat Fallout New Vegas without attacking anything and without taking any damage run. Would that even fit in the goddamn title? And that's gonna do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout New Vegas without taking any damage. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.